Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner. We're covering section 332, example 9 of Griffith's Introduction to Elect Electrodynamics. I'm going to move fast, but you can always rewind. Thumbs up and share if you appreciate my effort. As always, questions uh, can go in the video response or comments below. And let's get started. So in this problem, we have a surface charge, sigma naught, that varies according to theta and it's glued onto a sphere of radius capital R. And we're going to find the potential inside and outside of the sphere. So uh, from earlier results we found that the potential when you have azimuthal symmetry is going to look something like this of AK uh, R to the, well, I'm supposed to use L but oh well, plus BK over R to the K plus 1 PK cos theta. And in this case the potential outside, I'm going to go back to using L. Um, so as L, as uh, R tends to infinity, this term will blow up so we have to keep the BK, the BL. And of course we keep the PL term. And inside of R comma theta well, this term at the origin is going to blow up, so we have to keep AL. And that is a funky sigma of ALR to the L, uh, PL cos theta. So, one of the conditions is that, one of the boundary conditions is that the potential must be continuous um, along the sphere, which is basically where R equals R. So this is for R is greater than R or equal to. This is for R is less than or equal to R. Okay, and so when they're equal, then these two terms have to equal each other. So this has to equal that when R is capital R. And so we end up with something like this. So we get the sum of DL over R to the L plus 1, PL cos theta is equal to the sum of AL R to the L, PL cos theta. Now if you wanted to, if, if you know, it should be obvious that BL R to the, over R to the L plus 1 has to equal this term over here. These two have to be equal, but if you want to be more formal about it, you can do that trick. Ow! I crushed my toe on my chair. I lost my pen. Come here, pen. Okay, now I got my pen. So those two have to be equal, and if you want to be more formal about it, what you can do is multiply by p m uh, cos theta, sine theta, and then integrate from zero to pi for theta, and you'll see that the terms will just drop out where it's equal to zero. Otherwise, they're going to both equal to two over um, is it two uh, m plus one. So we run with this. So b L over R to the L plus 1 is equal to, oh, and capital R, A L capital R to the L. These are capital R's. So it's only true when you're at R. And so we end up with the conclusion that B L is equal to A L R to the 2 L plus 1. Let's box that. Save it for later. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to enforce the constraint that if you go back to section 2.35, I'll write that up here so you can click on that. If you go back to section 2.35 and review how surface charge densities behave um, with potential electric fields, you'll get this interesting equation. Minus 1 over epsilon naught of the surface charge. What this says is when you cross that surface charge, the potential changes, the, actually the first der different derivative of the potential changes by this amount of the, of the surface charge. So let's plug in our V out and V in there. Let's take note that the normal is R, because we're dealing with a sphere here centered on the origin. So we get uh, D by DR of the sum, let's see, the outside guy, bring this back. These are two important results here. 
and I'm out of paper. There we go. So the outside guy is BL over RL. Uh, R to the L plus one, excuse me. PL, I'll just write PL to be short. Minus D by DR of the sum of AL R to the L of the PL, okay? Has to equal negative one over epsilon naught, sigma naught of theta. So it's not a constant surface charge. It varies according to what theta you're talking about. So taking the derivative of this, the constants can come out. So we get the sum of VL, PL, and D by DR of R to the negative L plus one. Minus the sum of AL, PL, derivative of R to the L. Okay, and that's gonna be equal to BL, PL. Let's see, we just go, we take a minus L plus one, and now it's R to the minus L plus two, the minus goes inside, minus the sum of AL, PL, this is just L, R to the L minus one, okay? And we're gonna plug in that the R is at R, so we're gonna plug in R equals to R at this, this particular point we're interested in. And we're gonna replace BL with the thing we just calculated here. So we get sum of AL R to the two L plus one PL. Let's distribute this negative sign. So we get negative L minus one times R to the negative L minus two, distributing the minus sign there minus AL PL L R to the L minus one. Oh, it's the sum here. Okay, let's uh, simplify further. So we're taking the sum of a bunch of terms over L. Both of these terms have an AL in it. Both of the terms have the PL in it. Um, oh, this is a capital R. This is RL to the minus one this is a capital R as well. So we look at this R to two, two L plus one divided by R to the L plus two, or just you subtract this. So you subtract one L, you get an L minus one. And this guy goes away. So we can take out an R to the L minus one out of this. And we have this negative L minus one minus an L. Okay, that's going to be equal to um, negative one over epsilon naught, sigma naught of theta. And our last little simplification here is we're just going to multiply both sides by negative. So this becomes positive, 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 positive. And so we get to write this out really neatly, a to the l, r to the l minus one. And this is um, two l's plus one is equal to uh, one over epsilon naught, sigma naught of theta. And we have a PL as well, okay? And so at this point, we can do the Fourier's trick for the Legendre polynomials. I'm gonna kind of square this one. It's kind of an important result there. And what I'm gonna do first is we're gonna put AL all by its lone, lonesome self we can't do that yet, can we? No, so let's, let's do Legendre's polynomial trick. So we're gonna take the integral from zero to pi of the sum of AL, capital R to the L minus one, times two L plus one, times PL, and remember this is of cos theta, and we're gonna multiply by PM, cos theta, sine theta, d theta, is going to equal the integral from zero to pi of one over epsilon naught, sigma naught of theta, times PM, I ran out of room, I can't believe it. Okay. And we can pull out this part of the integral, but we note that only when L equals M do we get a result. In fact, when L equals M, this 
whole junk is equal to 2 over 2m plus 1. So the integral of all that is equal to 2 over 2m plus 1. Let's move that out. And now we're dealing only the a m only the m term survives. We have a m r to the m minus 1, 2m plus 1, times 2 over 2 to the m plus 1, not 2 to the m plus 1, just 2m plus 1, is equal to this integral, 1 over epsilon naught, sigma naught of theta, p m cos theta, sine theta d theta. And so our AMs are going to be given by, we can take this one over epsilon naught out, so we have one over epsilon naught, r to the m, one, oh, let's put all the stuff on the bottom here, we have two m plus one and two m plus one, these cancel. So we have a two on the bottom, two epsilon naught, r to the m minus one, times the integral, of this stuff all right so we've calculated all of our terms that's how we calculate the constants and our functions to bring them back are we have v out is equal to the sum over L. Our BL is given by this, so it's A L R to the 2 L plus 1 over R to the L plus 1 P L cos theta and our V on the inside is equal to the sum of sum over L A L R to the L P L cos theta. And that is a complete solution for this problem. So we've, we've basically solved it for any sigma, any sigma naught that they can throw at us. So as way of an example, I'm going to pause here and, and do, the, do the next part in another video. I'm kind of running out of time. Thank you for your time.